and welcome to the coronavirus lockdown live stream, the show that brings welcome levity to the end of the world, lifting the spirits of many of you currently in self-isolation by infecting as many as possible with comfort and distraction as the apocalypse unfolds. How are you all doing today? I don't know what time it is where you're watching, obviously, here in Croatia. It's the morning time, half past eight, and I did set my alarm, but uh, I was awake anyway when the alarm time came. I guess something inside me knew that this show was going to happen and that my body responded accordingly. But enough talk about my body. Let's talk about this book, Take Back Your Life, Recovering from Cults and Abusive Relationships by Yanya Lalich and Madeline Tobias, because I have been reading from chapter six, Leaving a Cult. Yesterday, we were reading the section on Loss of the Leader. Today, we're going to start with the heading, Counseled Out Via Planned Intervention. By the way, I'm just going to briefly check the comments because yesterday there was a an issue with buzzing. So <laughs> Nesbo9 says, excited to see who's in the green room today. Yes, we have. The green room is, is filling up slowly. We have currently Naomi in there. We have Arthur in there. So, uh, yes, it's it's looking to be a lively show. And we do have as well at least one new segment to unveil later, which I'm very excited about. Uh, oh, good. So, Joelle saying perfect sound. So, that's a relief. I can commence with my reading. A small percentage of cult members leave their group or relationship by means of exit counselling which is an intervention similar to that done with substance abusers. These are planned meetings of the member, her family or friends, and a team of professionals who work to educate and enable the member to reach an informed decision about her allegiance to the group. In the 1970s, increasing numbers of families became concerned with the role of cults in their adult children's new and disturbing behaviours, dropping out of school, cutting ties to families and friends, and sometimes disappearing completely. In response, deprogramming emerged, which was an early and often quite unsophisticated attempt to deal with the growing problem of cult involvement. The term deprogramming was meant to identify a process of discussion and evaluation that was intended to be the polar opposite of the cult's deliberate and often deceptive programming of their members. Over time, as some cults increasingly prevented outsiders, including families, from having access to members, the process of deprogramming began to involve the actual abduction and forcible detention of members in the locale where the deprogramming was to take place. Initially, deprogramming was not a coercive process, but eventually the term came to be associated with the, with the surprise snatching and confinement of a cult member by a deprogrammer hired by the family. Some deprogrammers acquired rather controversial reputations, and some allegations of abuse were made. Although involuntary deprogramming can get an individual out of a cult or abusive relationship, it can also cause problems. Aside from the fact that kidnapping is illegal, this type of detention has been found to be traumatizing in its own right. Former members who have been deprogrammed report being highly ambivalent about the experience. Though many are grateful to their parents or spouse or partner for getting them out of the cult, they sometimes also feel deep anger over the manner of the intervention. Also, post-traumatic symptoms such as nightmares, intrusive thoughts and flashbacks of the deprogramming may slow down their recovery from the cult experience. For many years, deprogramming may have seemed to be the only course of action for concerned families, but also there was the risk of families being misinformed, panicking, and rushing into unfortunate situations. 
We acknowledge the deep pain of families who felt there were no other alternatives to freeing their loved ones from an abusive cult or relationship, but we were and remain opposed to deprogramming as a means of getting someone out of a cult. On the other hand, we recognize that when minors are involved and there is evidence of harm, then families, or in some cases the authorities, should act in accordance with child protection laws and put the interest of the child first. In our opinion, the protection of children should supersede the whims or needs of any cult or leader. Over the years, new non-coercive means of helping cult members and their families have been developed. Fortunately, deprogramming has been replaced by a more respectful approach that is educational in nature, more professional in delivery, more effective in outcome, and, because it is voluntary, generally non-traumatizing. Carol Giambalvo describes this process, known as exit counselling, in Exit Counselling, a Family Intervention. Giambalvo's book is important reading for anyone interested in learning more about this type of voluntary intervention. Today, professionals who help cult members make informed decisions about their group affiliations are known as exit counsellors, cult information specialists, cult inter intervention specialists, or thought reform consultants. Exit counsellors are usually former cult members themselves, right, Jan Balvo. They have first-hand experience. They have knowledge of cult mindsets, the dynamics of cult membership, and the history of the particular cult in question and its leaders. They also have the ability to bypass the closed thinking brought about by mind control in order to reaccess the cultists' critical thinking abilities. These are vital areas of expertise. The following examples highlight positive outcomes of exit counselling. The first involves a planned intervention, while the second illustrates the merits of exit counselling of an exit counselling session for people who have already left a cult. David S. became increasingly concerned about his wife's involvement in a new age centre that advocated body work combined with meditation, channeling of discarnate entities, and counselling by non-professionals. Communication became more and more strained as David and his wife, Myra, began to disagree about child-rearing practices, sex, and household finances. When David heard rumours of sexual misconduct at the centre, he consulted a family therapist familiar with cults, he read all he could about thought reform programs and new age beliefs, then prepared for an exit counselling intervention. After consulting and interviewing several professionals, he chose a team he felt was knowledgeable and trustworthy and with whom he felt comfortable. Concerned about Myra's increasingly strange behaviours, David and his in-laws spent considerable time with the exit counselling team preparing for the intervention. The team researched the group's belief system and its historical precedents and interviewed family members extensively to become familiar with their perspectives on Myra, as well as to gain an understanding of her vulnerabilities and interests. With the team and family so well prepared, the intervention went smoothly. Myra was surprised at first by her family's concern and the appearance of the team, but she agreed to listen to what they had to say. She could have ended the intervention at any time by asking them to leave or leaving the house herself. At the end of three days, some interventions take longer. Myra was able to understand the influence and control techniques used by her group to manipulate and take advantage of her and decided not to go back. One weekend, this is I think another story, one weekend two exit counsellors met with 20 former members of an Eastern-style cult. Some had been members of the cult for 30 years. All had left the group within a few months of learning of their guru's abusive sexual practices. The weekend was organised by two of the former members and was designed to be an educational experience, combining explanations of thought reform 
with an overview of the philosophical beliefs of their group, including its origins and fallacies of doctrine and leadership. In addition, a separate workshop was held for women who had been sexually abused by the Guru. This weekend was cathartic and healing, armed with an understanding of the dynamics of cult influence and control and the effects of the Guru's manipulations and lies, the former members began to deal with their sense of failure, shame and guilt about their time in the cult. Many chose to, to continue this recovery process by entering therapy and attending support meetings for former members. One advantage of exit counselling is that participants receive a short course on cults and thought reform and the opportunity to learn how their particular group or leader deviates from accepted moral practices or belief structures. They also learn the origin of the group's belief system which may have been misinterpreted or kept hidden from them. This educational process provides them with a new understanding of their cult involvement armed with information and resources and often backed up by an educated and supportive family environment, cult members are more prepared to face the decision to remain in the group or leave. If they decide to leave, they are better equipped to begin their recovery process. I have been reading from chapter six of leaving a cult um, sorry, chapter six, which is leaving a cult from the book Take Back Your Life by Yanya Lalich and Madeline Tobias. There is actually just um, a few paragraphs left in the chapter, but I'll maybe save those for the next show. Very interesting material though, isn't it? From the perspective of those of us who have spent time in cults, it's interesting to know that um, the process of interventions and quote-unquote deprogramming has undergone such refinement over the years to the point where it's um, more effective now. Uh, I'd be fascinated to see what an intervention looks like for Jehovah's Witnesses. I'd imagine it requires a heck of a lot of planning and coordination. Uh, but yeah, I found that very interesting indeed. It's time to bring in our green room. So we have here Naomi, we have Arthur, and we have Sasha. How are you all doing? Uh, pretty Good. well. Good morning. How are you? Not bad, yeah. Hey, friends. Hey, friends. <laughs> Good to see you all. So we have Romania represented and we have Australia represented. So what's happening yes. locally? Because we need to keep this coronavirus themed, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, thanks for reading from that book too, though, Lloyd, because that is yeah. just beautiful stuff to help put everything in context and... Yeah, it's, it's excellent. I know people love the readings, so thank you. It is interesting, isn't it? It is. So what's happening locally in uh, Australia as regards to coronavirus? Go, Sasha. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think, look, with respect to the rest of the world, I think Australia is fortunately doing very well. Um, we're, we're very lucky to be in a, in a country where the government has taken some proactive stands and a healthcare system, and people tend to be responding fairly well. Would you say, Naomi, and we, we seem to be yeah. doing okay given the situation? Yeah, I think it's just starting to, I think people are just starting to get a bit more relaxed a little bit um, now, I think, because we've started to see the, um, the curve flatten. Um, but we're lucky, um, you're right, Sasha, in that we're already isolated. <laughs> Uh, we yeah. couldn't be more isolated. So, it, you know, we don't have all that um, nearby. You know, once they shut down the flights, you know, we're, we're an island. So hmm. I think we're lucky in that regard. There was, yeah. there are those disturbing stories coming out of uh, the United States. I was tweeting about this yesterday. Um, it just, it, it kind of disturbs me without getting too political. It disturbs me that people would, allow their political allegiances to to um, mobilize them into the streets yeah. uh, and and protest their quote unquote right to oh. um, to spread a deadly virus that that's turning yeah. people's lungs to soup um, I, I just don't understand how you can 
how you can have that mindset. And I was asking about whether it's exclusive to America or whether it's in other countries. And it seems to be pretty much, I mean, it's not happening so far in the UK. There was one, there were one or two saying that there's murmurings of it happening to, to some degree in Germany and Poland. Um, I can only imagine that there's maybe some kind of extreme nationalist movement involved. But it's just very disturbing, isn't it? Mm. And I think, like, with respect to everybody's political views, and, you know, and as you say, we're not going to make this uh, into anything more than what it is. It's, this is we're here to support one another. But mm. I was giving a bit of thought to that today, and, and I guess it's all motivated by fear. As we know, people... Um, you know, when you back a dog into a corner, it bites, it reacts harshly. When we're in a fight or flight situation, our adrenaline rushes, we react in a certain way. This whole situation is giving us the, the proverbial being backed into a corner. People are acting out of fear, and I guess that causes, let's hope that most of those who are acting like that, they're not normally bad people. They're just acting out of fear and uh, uncertainty and maybe a lack of clear direction or something is causing them to react in a way. But I guess they've got to remember, though, that these lockdowns are not done to take away civil rights. They're actually done to protect our our health and to protect one another. It's um, it's not about what's being taken away. It's what's being given to them. Indeed. Uh, Diana Moreno says it is incredibly disturbing here in the US. Uh, Rihanna Royer says it disturbs a lot of us in the US as well, Lloyd. Um, Eric Larson says many people in the US are more concerned about the economy than about mm. people's lives, and it's extremely frustrating. Uh, and Rianne saying some of these protesters are yeah. fully armed militia, yeah. which I, I guess scary. in a way They're signals fine. their political ideology. Um, yeah. Because, you know, it, it's not a stretch to suggest that if you're carrying like an assault rifle, you're probably associated with the uh, NRA movement and therefore more likely to be um, a Republican or in the extreme side of, you could say, the Republican movement. So, yeah. It's, and yet viruses don't see that. Viruses don't care what yeah. our political allegiances are. And, exactly. You know, it prompted me to do a bit of research into the only thing that's, or one of the similar pandemics, the 1918 flu, um, mm. the Spanish, Spanish flu as it was called back then. And the research I've found is that, you know, and I was thinking people are so ready to get back into their life now, but they forget that with that Spanish flu, um, the second wave killed 20 to 50 million people. The first wave only killed only three to five million. Um, mm. And so they were so willing to get back into their normal life that it killed 10 times more yeah. in that second wave. And, and I'm not sure if people grasp that this still has the potential to have a second or third wave if we're not careful. Not trying to be catastrophizing, but well, no. just realistic. Basically, yeah. we are vulnerable up until the point where we have a workable vi um, vaccine solution uh, with it. which to kind of push back. I mean, until that point, all we can do is weaken the virus's ability to spread. Um, yeah. So flattening the curve is, is just about doing that, but um, even when the the lockdown measures start to loosen, we're still at risk from the virus and there being maybe a second or third or even mm. fourth wave until that vaccine starts being circulated. I'm not an expert, a medical yeah. expert, by the way, but that seems to be the thinking. Yeah. We should, we should uh, ask the resident expert at JW Survey. Who's that? You know who who that is, and the viewers know too. Oh well, Sherry, I be I believe Sherry can't oh, be yeah. here today. No, yeah. I'm not talking about Sherry. I'm talking about the resident expert on the coronavirus. Oh, you're talking about Jessica. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's not. <laughs> That's she's right. not fully briefed <laughs> on on vaccines and flattening the curve and all that kind of thing. If I'm being completely honest. Oh, I see. Um, hers is a more you could say simplified approach to the virus, one of being absolutely terrified by it and thinking it's everywhere. Um, the only so sympathy... can't go on the playground. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, the only, uh, I was going to say, the only, the only sympathy I have um, uh, for that population is that um, I get what it's like to passionately believe in something which is considered to be so stupid 
um, to so many people, um, but being in the middle of it and really believing it and thinking you're doing the right thing, um, like I can kind of relate to it, mm. you know. Yeah. I don't think, you know, how you perceive yourself and how others perceive you can be quite um, different. So that's the only uh, sympathetic uh, perspective I have. Like we, we can all be blinded by a perspective. Indeed, we yeah. can. And and I think to a degree, tribalism, when, when people yeah. that we care about and people who we respect are pursuing a form of a, a, a particular course, sometimes tribalism and the need for kind of group solidarity kind of, comes to the fore doesn't it um marilla pink says hi everyone from new zealand we are doing well here and yeah. moved to level three on tuesday next week which means the lifting of some restrictions and getting back to some work right or with social distancing still in place so yeah that's that's good to hear and uh, it hearing... would be fair to say that new zealand were on very serious lockdowns at a stage mm. that many parts of the world didn't even i mean they don't even have takeaway restaurants or takeaway cafes or any mm. sort of schooling I, I um marilla maybe can give more clarification on that but my understanding is they went hard and they went quick in their lockdown mm. situation and the result is they have had one of the least rates of infections per population and yeah it was tough but they went early so that they didn't have the consequences mm. Yes, yep. nine on Twitch says, didn't I read they are trialing a vaccine in the UK this yeah. week? I've heard all sorts, to be honest, I guess. I, I tend to take it with a pinch of salt until it's actually here and we're, we're distributing mm. it, you know, because uh, I guess lots of countries could conceivably be, um, it's kind of a race, isn't it, to, yeah. to get to that stage. Um, Who's trying the first yeah. virus, a uh, vaccine? Jay Proctor says they're talking about opening my shop up next week. Um, yeah, here in Croatia, um, we've, com comparatively speaking, and, and considering the fact that we're just over the Adriatic from Italy, we've we've not done too badly um, in terms of the impact of the virus here. And already they're starting to loosen things to the point where we can now travel anywhere within our counties, um, but it's it would be impossible for me to drive to Zagreb because um, you're not allowed to travel between counties. And also, the way it works with the number plate system is your county is the first two letters of your license plate. So the police would immediately be able to tell, ah, that's a car from CSAC if I drove into Zagreb. So... Um, yeah, we're, we're still restricted somewhat in our movements, but there's talk of that being released eventually. And Deanna and I are quite looking forward to getting to the coast and uh, having our, our getaway once uh, once the restrictions allow us to do that. Um, but let's put this talk of viruses aside and 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 <laughs> indulge in a little bit of sophistication and culture. Because if I understand my audience, as I think I do, what they're all craving at the moment is a bit of poetry. Already. Well, I thought I had my little rant the other day. Um, so this ta one today is going to be a lot more positive. So, um, and, and not at all confrontational for anybody. <laughs> we live in a time where the world is uniting, showing care for one another rather than fighting because viruses don't see the color of our skin or respect the borders or countries or nations we live in. We're in this together, we've often now heard. Yes, remember that motto, don't let it be blurred. So what can we gain? Any life lessons? Can the world unite and make progressions? For now's not a time for political ego and strife or fighting over stupid things or getting uptight. It's a time to be thoughtful, caring and kind, a time to thank healthcare and science combined, a time to look forward to a new future bright, knowing that soon once again, things will be all right. 
bravo. That was a Thank beautiful you. poem. Thank you very much, Sasha. Yes. Um, lots to lots to be positive about amidst all of this doom and gloom. We're also seeing, I think, um, an outpouring of humanity. And I think, you yeah. know, we were speaking earlier about the protesters. Um, I think it's safe to say that they are a very, very noisy, but very, very small minority and the vast majority are very supportive of what our healthcare professionals are doing and doing what we can to support that by easing their workload and staying inside um marilla pink says yes sasha is correct we could only go to the supermarket only one person from each bubble Ooh. household you are in lo lockdown with or to the pharmacy do they call them bubbles in australia I think they were referring to the household, oh. those that live together are, are classed as a bubble um, and that you couldn't necessarily mix with people that you wouldn't ordinarily be living with. You can't merge proximity. your bubbles. Uh, and it's yeah. New Zealand, just in case. Um, it all oh, seems sorry, strange, New Zealand. But, yeah. <laughs> so you can't, you can't foam your bubble if you're in New Zealand. Hey. Okay. And if it's New no. Zealand, would we pronounce it as bubble or would it be pronounced a little differently, Naomi? New Zealand oh. accent? I, I can't do one. Um, but I can't. No, I don't know. We'll have to have Marilla help us with that. We love our Kiwi cousins. It's all good. Sorry, Marilla. <laughs> no cafe, restaurant, hairdressers, which is creating some interesting hairdos. Yeah, I need a haircut. Um, but yeah, I had a bit of a thought about that. Uh, really? You, you've been thinking about my haircut needs, have you? Always. Said? Always. Yeah. Always. <laughs> Sorry. It's good to know. It's good no, to know. No, no. Bonus points just for the JW survey team thinking about my hair needs. <laughs> you know, I was I was always reprimanded in the in the at the Kingdom Hall when I had my hair too long and I didn't cut have it cut. What do you mean you were always reprimanded at the Kingdom Hall? You were never a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> but I, I went Stop to the meeting. You, I know you crave having this shared experience with us, but you're an outsider. <laughs> own it okay but i went to the meetings you know and and there was the the service overseer who was a very very kind and loving elder but he asked me hey what's with this hair is oh, your gee. is your uh, barber on vacation or what happened arthur because uh, you look so worldly oh dear yeah <laughs> yeah you know but you think about these things that have changed and i reckon we're gonna see um this will be a pivotal moment in the way humans look. You know, when you go through, well, Lloyd, you might speak to this more. When you go through old castles from the medieval times, the doorways look really low because people were a lot shorter. Um, as, as a society, we've changed, we've grown. I reckon coronavirus will be the start of a change of, of humanity. We're going to all come out of this as hairier people because uh, we can't get our hair cut. And waxing and beautician services are not available, so people will just get hairy legs. Nails, you know, women who like to get their nails done, that can't be done anymore, so that'll be a thing of the past. Um, we're all, we're all going to get fatter because we're not having three meals a day. We're all having seven meals a day when we're inside <laughs> our house. So maybe this, the, the post-corona human is going to look a lot hairier, larger, and less groomed. Well, well, without getting too graphic, Sasha, <laughs> I would imagine there are some areas of, of hair issues that can be taken care of without the assistance of a hairdresser. Um, <laughs> so I'm with you to some extent. Um, just, just putting it out there. I don't really know what to say. Do you need to draw a diagram? Um, <laughs> yeah, People like, are cutting like David's own hair, You know, like David's play, put a diagram on the... Yeah, put a, yeah. a whiteboard up. Go on, yeah. Naomi. I was just saying that people are cutting their own hair now. Um, there are loads of YouTube uh, tutorials on how to do it. People are doing it themselves. So we'll see how that go. goes. I think it's a good way to get back at people that you live with, that you're getting frustrated with. What, you mean like a, pr a hair protest? Yeah, of, like, of here, what? let me cut your hair. Oh, right. I thought, like, yeah. as in having, having aesthetically jarring hair on your own head. <laughs> right. Um, Interesting. I like that. Oops, I slipped. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Alicia Giordano says, awesome, Sasha. More appreciation for your poem. Um, Eric Larson says, very nice, Sasha. Positively uplifting. I feel more cultured now. Eric, that's what we're going for. We want to inject culture into everyone's lockdown live stream experience. 
Um, Rianne also says that was great, Sasha. Uh, Susan also giving appreciation. Uh, Marilla says, correct, re-bubble. So oh, don't foam you. the bubble. Keep your bubble <laughs> intact. Um, Alicia says, come to Jersey Lloyd. You would get the best haircut ever. Long way to go. Uh, <laughs> for a haircut, it would have to be quite some haircut, but uh, never say never, uh, Alicia. Uh, Nesbo9 on Twitch says, I've shaved my partner's head. Now he wants to shave our babies. No way is his first haircut going to be a pair of... How hairy is your baby? I mean, <laughs> we, have, we have Julia upstairs. She's one year old. And her hair hasn't been cut once, I think. And it's still only maybe about that long. So I'd be interested to know exactly what has prompted this conversation. Well, Nespo uh, hasn't said what sort of baby. So we don't know if it's a, true. a human yes, baby. May not be maybe a, a different species altogether yeah, for all we exactly. know. Maybe maybe an Afghan baby. <laughs> um, uh, Rian says that she's going to cut. My, go. Yeah, so this is uh, future tense. So maybe that will never end up happening. Maybe maybe he'll cut his own hair, or maybe the the lockdown will be. Who knows? But let us know, Rian, if that ends up happening. Um, how well, things I'm just putting it on record now and. Everybody sees my hairstyle, but I'm putting it on record that if we can't go to the barber, I will shave it off and go bald. Um, I'd be quite happy to do that. Put that challenge out there to any other person who wants to do the same. We'll see how serious this lockdown stream? goes. Will you do that on Ooh. live stream? Yes, and get um, yes. Get, get so, Sherry to do that. So yeah, she that's might that's enjoy that. Yeah. Hang on. What what are we suggesting? That we sh that Sherry shaves Sasha's hair on live stream on, on a lockdown live stream. Yeah, correct. I I would be fully supportive of that. Yeah. Um, if the hairdressers get closed down in Australia and that's the way to go, I'm just putting it out there. We might do that. And I, it may I think, have to be I, an incentive though. And if I know Sasha, he's willing to to take one for the team and and do what's needed, um, cross whatever boundaries are needed in, in in order to bring people entertainment, even if it means. Um, putting his head in the in the hands of of Sherry and a very enthusiastic pair of clippers. So, yeah, we shall see. Yeah, mm. but we'll see Maybe what we, we can make. Maybe we can monetize happen. it to make it worthwhile. Monetize think... it and donate to a charity. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Joel Brown idea. has a, an observation to make about Arthur, which I would fully support. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's just see here. Lucille Hoy says, as a Pilates instructor, I erred on the side of caution and closed my home studio to face-to-face -face clients. It's forced me into Zoom classes. And to be honest, I love it. Yeah, I'd imagine Excellent. less BO. Less <laughs> BO when you're doing it over Zoom. Um, and well done for taking the initiative, Lucille. That's excellent. Yeah. You know, I've heard of so many businesses that have done that, taken the initiative to do, you know, streaming and 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 so many other ways of doing things, of course, because of the lockdown. But some, you know, it, it really highlights some people are actually making a success of this by mm -hmm. looking for new and better ways to supplement their income or to provide a service for the community and their clients. It's bringing out the best in, in a lot of people's ability to think on their feet and to adapt. And yeah, you wonder how much of it's going to stick afterwards as well, because then you can you can run a Zoom Pilates class to anyone in the world that they wouldn't have to be in your local area. So right. that really opens up so many opportunities. Be interesting. Opens up your market. Yes. Um, you know, Nate, Deanna, Nate, sorry. I was just going to say, Deanna Moreno says, my stepdad, elder, tells my kids they are worldly because of their hair. Oh. Oh, now, yeah. now we're kind of delving into the whole issue of, Jehovah's Witnesses being obsessed with people's looks. And mm. well, Arthur hinted it at it earlier uh, in one of his two appearances at the Kingdom Hall. Um, he was <laughs> he was counseled on his hair. So it is something that JWs are, are fastidious about, isn't it? Mm. Yep. Um, Naomi, uh, we were talking about um, how we can you know look for opportunities with work as well. You might be able to speak to this um, from the entertainment. Uh, side of things a lot of comedians are taking the initiative to um, look for new ways they of course all social interactions have been canned so comedians have had to cancel all of their their gigs and I was listening to a few well-known Australian names today and they were talking about how they've gone online with their gigs mm. of course they you know some of them have lost 
80 to 90 percent of their income stream yeah so they're going online and they're they're saying if you can donate five dollars for a stand-up routine they're getting 500 people listen to a to a, a show five dollars each they're able to supplement their income um and people are willing to put in that you know the equivalent yeah. of a couple of cups of coffee have you yeah. heard of anything th through yeah, those that you that, that's with? exactly what i'm like that's exactly what you're seeing um especially the professional uh ones that earned you know like you say most of their income doing comedy um they're doing live streams they're doing patreon where you can you know subscribe and get some um you know um uh, additional yeah. material um they're doing all sorts of things a lot of it's going online and you know th that's the sort of thing where you wonder uh how how it's going to go back from here um because if someone can sit in their in their house um, in Australia and sort of open that market right up and, and you know, um, be seen by loads of people um, globally, you, you got to wonder why they'll bother sitting at the back of a dirty pub uh, waiting to go on uh, again after that. Lucille yeah. uh, says that she tripled her claims. There you go. Oh, wow. Well done. Yeah, that's great. I don't, I don't think it'll ever replace the, the human need, though, to, to be in association with others, to, to sit there together, to, to laugh with people together at a comedy gig and to be shoulder to shoulder. I don't think it could be replaced. No, completely. not fully, but there might be. Uh, the other interesting thing I was reading about is how much more accessible this world is for people who can't leave their house. So for mm. the first time, they're getting access um, to so much more... Um, uh, you know, things that they wouldn't normally get, you know, be able to access, uh, especially in things like pubs where it's downstairs, that's not so easy if you're in a wheelchair or, you know, there are loads of things stopping people right. from getting out. So it's, it, you're right, it won't replace it completely, but it might settle into some kind of hybrid um, model that, that could do both for sure. Lucille says she's offering free Pilates as a wow. gift as we need right. the connection and stress relief if anyone is interested. Thanks so much, Lucille. That's lovely. That is nice. Well done. Now, speaking of gifts, we have a gift in the form of talent right here with us on the <laughs> lockdown live stream. Because if I, again, if I know my audience, what they especially appreciate, apart from sophistication and culture in the form of poetry, is a little bit of lighthearted um, entertainment in the form of singing. And for that, we have Sing Along with Arthur. Oh, Dear viewers, let's uh, do this uh, song. It's one of the requests I had. Uh, I don't know if it was on YouTube or it was on the live stream, but it's the House of the Rising Slave. There is a compound and upstate New York where the faithful slave resides. They meet together on Wednesday mornings and on policies prayerfully decide. My mother was a Jehovah's Witness. He saw my new tight pants. My father was a drunken elder down in Southern California. The only thing 
Tony needs as a suitcase and a trunk and never gets me onto the platform unless he's pissed and drunk So we do. Oh, is this a piano? Brilliant. Oh, I've never so seen a piano before. Breaking new boundaries in today's thing along with art. <laughs> oh god! So it's the envelope of what's possible. Who's gonna tell him? It is a long instrumental, isn't it? To be fair. Oh, mother, tell your children not to be like I behave. Spend your life as well. free of deadly cults, not in the house of the rise and slave. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, uh, the, the, oh, whoa! It feels like you, it was cut short prematurely. <laughs> I was just getting into it. Well, it there was a long instrumental <laughs> and uh... yeah, it was but beautiful. I was, I was just losing myself in the moment there. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd, are Sorry. you going to tell him or what? T- tell him what? <laughs> no, I, I think that was the best one he's done. It's brilliant. It was very oh, really? good. Um, well, yeah. was on, I, on, was I on what other lockdown live stream have we had an air piano? I'm not aware <laughs> of that even being a thing until today. And and the lockdown brilliant. live stream is all about pushing the envelope, trying new things. And today, Arthur gave the world the air piano. I mean, he gave us what we need. That was brilliant. It really Beautiful was. job, Arthur. Thank but you. Am I am I alone in having not heard any music? Yes, it, I, I hear heard it. the music. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were playing. I had no music. I, I heard a karaoke version there with absolutely no music. <laughs> just an uh, sorry, a cappella version, no music at all. So, wow, hilarious. Arthur, I'll have to listen back on YouTube with the music. But I was very impressed at how well you hit the notes with what I thought was no music playing. I, well I, done. I agree with Joelle, who says I think this beats that duck song. <laughs> um, Rianne says she's laughing out loud. My husband came to see what's happening. <laughs> Um, How do you explain that? Casilla <laughs> uh, Tarok says, "Share the lyrics, please. There's, <laughs> there's demand here for, for Arthur's lyrics." Yeah. Uh, Claire says it was amazing. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't have uh, lyrics written down. Now, I was uh, fully improvising it. Well, well you need done. to make the lyrics amazing. available, don't you, really? Yes, Arthur? yes, I will. Um, Rianne says that was absolutely brilliant. Um, Diana Moreno says, Muy bien, Arthur, air piano is the way to go. Gracias, Diana. You see, Cynthia agrees with me, agrees with me. It's the best one he's done. Uh, instrument, I'm sorry, say what you will about any other aspects of Arthur's performance. We have never, ever, I'm not aware of a single instance of an air piano before. I mean, I've gone the uh, guitar, you know, I've had the air guitar, I've had the air keyboard, exactly. And can, it was so we, convincing. Can we get an air sax next week, Arthur? Air <laughs> sax. Oh, that would be amazing. Joel Brown says, right. trademark the air piano, Arthur. <laughs> Eric wants to know when your album drops. Um, I, 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 I can't imagine I would drop his album. Um, <laughs> maybe but I would. I don't know. I will, I'd have to listen I will to have it. To, I will have to have these uh, lockdown restrictions uh, over and then uh, head into the studio of my music producer and uh, and do these tracks uh, really high kind of, quality. 
Of course, you're then going to have to tour and there's going to be stadium performances. So, yeah, give the people what they want, really. Now, speaking of giving the people what they want, uh, we have a new segment Ooh. Um, to, to unveil. And uh, I was tasked, because Naomi and I have been discussing this behind the scenes, and I was tasked last night with creating the intro sequence for it. I'm excited. Um, well, you say you're excited, <laughs> Naomi. You haven't seen the intro right. sequence yet. It's not one of my proudest moments. Uh, I like to think that when it comes to video editing, I've got quite a bit of experience by this point. But I'm going to be honest, I was tired. Um, I was a little bit distracted. Um, yeah, it... it it didn't turn out quite how I how I wanted, All and right. there was a little bit of a merging between video projects. So, just just uh, right. yeah, bear that, bear that in mind. I uh, believe but, in your life. But now it's time for Naomi's Bible Box. Bible box. <laughs> yeah, so. Lord, I, 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 just like the air piano, I believe it's your best yet. Well, you see, you, you've you been kind oh. now, Naomi. I I saw, I mean, obviously I was using stock footage. Yeah. And I may have been a bit distracted by the fact <laughs> that there were people dancing in construction hats and what have and you. just them in. And I also kind of felt a bit sorry for the fact that probably no one was buying that footage. And <laughs> I don't know what my thinking was. Maybe I just wanted to give the 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 person some work. I don't know. Um, but it is what it is. It's um, brilliant. But anyway, Naomi's Bible box. Go. Arthur, are you going to say something? Arthur. Arthur, well, we can't, we can't hear you. Hear you. <laughs> Sorry, my mic was muted, the uh, hardware voice. So, Lloyd, I really loved those LDC volunteers dancing in the intro. It was <laughs> yes, that, that's exactly what they brilliant. were, LDC volunteers. Well done. It well rescued, brilliant. Arthur. Well rescued. <laughs> well, I thought that was worth it, so that's good. Um, so uh, the format of this segment is um, looking for reality TV show formats based on the Bible. So I thought... We kick off uh, this week with um, what I'm calling the Great Biblical Bake Off. Um, for those of you <laughs> that have that show in your countries, it's a it's a baking show. The tagline for the show is "It's not as Ezekiel as it looks." Oh, um, clever! <laughs> clever. Thank you. Uh, so I'll give you the, the the premise and the rounds, and hopefully you'll get into it. Feel free to chuck in your ideas, by the way, if I'm missing something important. Um, so there's going to be eight contestants. And they'll walk into a tent with a workbench each uh, with a load of ingredients on there, but no oven. And we'll get to that in a minute. Um, and the first round is the signature bake round where they get to bake bread using the ingredients on the table. Uh, just, to, just to be clear, that is wheat, barley, beans, lentils, millet and spelt. Uh, they have to make a bread. Uh, but there's no oven. But what there is at the end of each bench is a camping toilet. Oh, now, the challenge here is to bake bread using the ingredients on the table, but cooked on a fire made with human excrement. Is that what they did in Bible times? Yeah, that's what Ezekiel was asked to do uh, in Ezekiel chapter 4, if anyone's interested. Um, wow. Now, they get judged by hosts who are elders, and um, the elders are looking for an even bake, no soggy bottoms, important. <laughs> oh. And... <laughs> <laughs> At the end, end of the bake, the elders give either a G for good, an I for improved, or a W for work on. Very nice. Uh, so then they bake their bread. Uh, the second round is a technical challenge where they have to lay on their left side for 390 days uh, and then lay on their right side for 40 days. And it's technical because they need to use ropes uh, to keep themselves in that position. 
Um, and every day they're allowed to eat some of that bread that they baked, uh, but only 200 grams or eight ounces, um, and drink some water about the size of a can. Now, if they get through that challenge, um, then they're through to the third and final round, which is the showstopper round. Uh, and in this round, they have to shave their head and their beard, because uh, there's no beards, as we know, um, unless, of course, they're married to a gay elder. Um, <laughs> and then with the hair that they've shaved, they've got to burn a third of it, they've got to strike a third of it with a sword, and the, the other third they get to throw into the wind. And, um, and for those who actually make it to the end of the show, stop around, then the judges uh, anoint the winner um, as the star biblical baker. So that's my pitch for the great biblical bake off. Interesting. What yeah. Do you think? I, I, but you're, and you're saying this is based on a passage in Ezekiel? Yeah, Ezekiel chapter four. Ezekiel had to do all of that um, to represent what God was going to do to Israel. Am I right? I don't know. Someone else can. Arthur, it <laughs> likes to, uh, uh, he's actually providing us with oh, Ezekiel chapter four. So thank you, Arthur, Arthur, Arthur to your rescue. Great. There you go. Look at it. We get to the bottom of this. It is madness. Yes. Looking over a fire made from human excrement. Yep. Interesting. He, he had to cook it on excrement. And here's a, here's a slight uh, little funny thing. Ezekiel said to God, look, I'll do all that, but I cannot um, do it using my own excrement. And God was like, fine, just use the excrement of it. Uh, look down. God went on to say, yeah, wow. it, that's fine. You just do it from an animal. In verse 15, that'll be off. Let's go down. But you, God let him off. All right, he goes. But seriously, though, I mean, we're talking about the, the biggest intelligence in the universe. Yeah. And this is what they're coming up with. You yep. know, I want to see dried human excrement used in a <laughs> bread baking process. Exactly that. Wow. That is fascinating. Well, Naomi's Bible box has produced um, quite a fascinating uh, concept, and we, we will take that into consideration here at the Lockdown live stream as to whether that would be a worthy show. Uh, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Lloyd. Um, the the let it let's just be clear that the um, the title uh, Naomi's Bible box was actually um, approved by Lloyd, not me, because in in that could be. That could be referring to all sorts of segments, which we're not going to have on this no, uh, family-friendly channel. Well, I, I don't know where your mind's going, Naomi, but for me, it's a box and it's about the Bible. It's a segment. <laughs> um, but okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, well, actually, we need four segments to build a box, but well, that's a different geometry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Arthur. Thank you. <laughs> So I have thoroughly enjoyed um, Naomi's Bible box. Apologies again for getting distracted while I was making the intro. But probably um, uh, Nova TV wants to to buy that uh, to buy I hope format. So. Yeah. Well, I can't I'm see why they wouldn't. Um, all the ingredients of a good show. Hey. I think. Uh, did, are you are you okay, Sasha? You needed to uh, perhaps produce your own fuel. For a, for a future <laughs> bread baking experiment, we can't hear we can't, you, mate. We can't hear you. Yeah, muted. Yeah, I think you've muted me. No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> we can just about hear you. You're just very faint. Uh, that's probably an improvement. Many people would say. No. <laughs> Sorry. I'm back again. Sorry. Good. Yeah. Good. 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 I am having some battery issues, so if I happen to drop off the call, everyone, my my apologies. No, that was okay. brilliant, Naomi. Brilliant. Brilliant. Love it. I was just thinking you could add to that though, because maybe if we bring in another biblical passage, because whenever you cook, of course, cooking often is enhanced by spices. So maybe if Lot was one of the characters, he could bring along all of the salt that was needed to enhance <laughs> that dish. Um, it would need really quite a lot of enhancement given the surroundings, wouldn't it? And the, yeah. the process, yeah. That's a good. But, that's a good call. But that definitely would be the most kosher memorial bread ever. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, Bob Oak says the governing body do follow the Bible. They have been cooking up excrement <laughs> for more than a century. There you go. Uh, 
<laughs> well, Bob, you make a good point. Uh, you make a good point. And I wanted to bring in some great humour that the governing body is just spewing out in the July 2020 Watchtower, if I may, Lloyd. By all means. Yeah, please. Yeah, the, I think the governing body actually think that they're comedians now. So they've written a paragraph in, in this Watchtower. Um, they said, in your house of faith, you should not only use such soft materials as feelings and emotions, but also hard facts and solid logic. You need to prove to yourself that the Bible contains the truth about Jehovah. I, I, just, I rolled did on the they, floor when I read that one. Did they say hard facts and solid logic? Yeah, yeah. I'll forward it to you. It's brilliant. I will, I will, it? bring, up, I will bring up the magazines. Shortly. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, Arthur is right on the case. <laughs> I haven't downloaded also, it yet in English. They've also they also churned out a fantastic one-liner. You know, I, I think they think they're just going to be stand-up comedians. Here they said in this paragraph, we need to trust Jesus, the role he plays in God's purpose with his organization. We need to trust in the only channel that Jehovah is using today. So I don't think Jeffrey Jackson must have written that paragraph. He said that would so. be a presumptuous thing to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. So, so yeah. Um, humorous uh, comedians they are but then they summed it all up you know they said we have to reject apostate teachings since the beginning of the christian congregation the devil has been using many deceivers to plant doubts um we need to discern the difference between facts and lies because our enemies may use the internet or social media to undermine our trust in jehovah and our I love for our brothers see this I Remember who is behind such propaganda satan and rejected yes i think you could do a great video on that one, so it's on page eight in the July. Yeah, our faith has to be based July more more than just the Christ-like love of God's people. Why? Suppose a fellow believer, even an elder or a pioneer, commits a serious sin, or what if a brother or a sister hurts you in some way, or perhaps someone becomes an apostate, asserting that we do not have the truth. If such things happen. Will you be stumbled and stop serving Jehovah? The lesson is this. If you were to build your faith in God purely on the way that other people act instead of on your relationship with Jehovah himself, your faith would not be solid. In your house of faith, you should, not, you should use not only such soft materials as feelings and emotions, but also hard facts and solid logic. <laughs> But it goes you on need to say to prove to yourself that the Bible hmm. contains the truth about Jehovah. How can you prove that to yourself if you don't listen to the other side of the argument? It's impossible sure. to you, prove it to you yourself. You do it by referencing the Bible itself, telling you that it is itself truthful. <laughs> but I, I, I've heard, I mean, hard facts and solid logic does not describe the, uh, the, what Jehovah's Witnesses are expected to believe and follow. True. It's astonishing yep. language. Be persuaded to believe. Yeah, it needs thorough persuasion on the part of uh, witnesses for the student to get mm. inculcated with Jehovah's unerrant, inerrant so, truths. So today I saw... But they're, they're, they're full of humor at the moment. Um, they're absolutely full of humor. Some some of you might have already seen too the the letter that um, Jason Wynn, a friend of the channel, had posted up earlier today. A letter to oh yeah, in circuits. Did you yeah, that, that was one? a. Yeah. They were basically putting a call out for uh, people to come forward. I think probably for a JW Broadcasting episode, uh -huh. um, but they're they're asking for people who have experienced. Um, being disfellowshipped and view it as a positive thing and they weren't kind of they, they felt it was a loving thing that's it so they want mm. people to come forward and say i was disfellowshipped and it was totally loving yeah. uh, and so now i'm going to be watching like a hawk the future testimonials because we'll be able to point back to this letter and say well this well is, actually yeah. that's not not something new or unexpected i mean uh Whenever they need some uh, extraordinary type of experience. Well, it's new and unexpected that we've actually seen the letter. 
Yes. yes. You know, I, I, I don't letters... doubt for a moment that these letters go out routinely, but to actually see a letter in advance of the thing appearing yes, is, it is. is new. Very it much is, so. Yeah. yeah. It's basically a call out for anybody who went rushing back to a toxic and abusive relationship and, and praised the fact that it was the best thing they ever did in their life. Yep. Yeah, it's like, it's like in Britain. Lovely weather, isn't it? It's raining cats and dogs. Mm. <laughs> Don't knock the weather in Britain, Arthur, <laughs> until you've lived there. Uh, Julia Dasman says they are probably looking in now. The GB are definitely running scared of normal people exposing their con. Um, yeah, absolutely remarkable language in that watchtower that we were just reviewing. Thanks for bringing it to our attention, Sasha. Very helpful. Well, thanks uh, to it was, our, it our was released. It was released this very morning. I mean, yeah. late at, I yesterday, think late at the, night. My friend, Arthur usually my gives me a heads up on these things, but he's obviously been distracted <laughs> lately, um, and Sasha's beaten him to the punch. No, no. One of our good friends, Ben, brought this to my attention today, and no, I thank him for for doing that. That was great. I saw a Jehovah's Witness meme today, um, like four Jehovah's Witnesses, and um, it's it had a picture of the devil and Jesus standing next to each other. And the devil said, I managed to close all the kingdom halls down. And the next one down was Jesus saying, well, I managed to open them all up in people's homes, like millions up in people's homes. So uh, I thought it was both hilarious and um, evident. <laughs> of, Interesting. Yeah. Of Jesus' bl uh, blessing and yeah. <laughs> Thanks. the organization. <laughs> we seem to have lost Sasha, so he... Ah. He's in uh, lockdown live stream purgatory at the moment. <laughs> Hopefully he will be released. But according point. to reasoning, the purgatory is not a biblical teaching. Let's not forget that. True. Oh, yes, I know. I know, Arthur. I know. <laughs> um, I know you do. But it's... Greg Harley says, Yahweh, or whatever you call him, has never intervened in any human tragedy and never will. It's really boring. And JW Org are just desperate freaks. Waiting for redemption, they will not get. Strong words there from Greg. Um, Claire saying, I saw that meme too. Oh, God. So, yeah. Um, how's it going, Sasha? Are you okay with your technical issues? Oh. Yeah, my apologies. You have to keep plugging in, of course, the new iPhone. You can't have your headphones and your power at the same time. So, sorry. Ah, yes, of course. <laughs> Yes. You see, yeah. you don't have that problem with Android. No, exactly. I often wonder what it is with Apple making their products actually harder to use. Like, I have, um, a, is it a 2016 MacBook? And it still has the Maglock. And every single day, I'm thankful for the fact that I can power my computer without it actually being plugged in. Because literally every day, if I'm working upstairs, Jessica at some point will run past the computer and her her foot will catch in the cable and it will yank out of the computer. But because it's just magnetic, it makes no difference whatsoever. But if it were actually a different, if it were any other kind of connection, I'd be concerned. Um, but of course, modern MacBooks, uh, it's more complicated than that. Um, I need to break free from the cult of Apple and join a new cult of Android. See the light. Or, or you need to join the cult of wireless headphones. Yes, that's a whole other cult, isn't it? Gives yeah. you a bit more freedom. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love sticking to cables. Yeah. Yeah. So, For example, uh, this, this headset I use, this is uh, USB based. Oh, is it? Yeah, and I have a much clearer audio than on regular 3.5 millimeter jack. Yeah, Joel Brown saying you need wireless airphones. <laughs> um, Eric Larson says, Satan, I stopped Jehovah's Witnesses from going door to door. Jesus, well, um, Armageddon is just around the corner. <laughs> um, welcome, Vicky, who's here, uh, who's been here for the last 10 minutes. Nice to have you with us. Better late than never, I always say. Um, nice <laughs> I must buy a MacBook because Lloyd recommended it. <laughs> Honestly, um, 
<laughs> in all seriousness, uh, the MacBook that I have was actually um, donated by a subscriber to the John Cedars channel uh, quite some time ago. Well, it's a 2016 MacBook, so that tells you how long ago it was donated, well before Patreon. And it completely uh, revolutionized my work because up to that point I was working on quite a slow computer and I was very limited in the length of videos I could make and I think at one point I was making videos in chunks and sewing them together on a separate piece of software if it, if it had to be long but the MacBook just immediately transformed everything and made it much easier to edit so uh, it's been a, a massive improvement since I've had it and it's I must say it's starting to I'm starting to notice technical problems now that I've had been using it like relentlessly for the past four years, but um, it served me very well. Lloyd, did you pray just a little bit before that person yes. donated? Okay, I just wanted to make Good a question. Call. Yeah, I I raised my arms aloft and said, "Lord, oh Lord, um, how can I make these videos if I don't have a MacBook?" And then an email came straight through. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so cynthia luna says yes take a part of the forbidden apple from the reluctant <laughs> <laughs> nicely done there cynthia nicely done so sasha how how are things going? I'm, I'm i keep hearing some pings uh is it is your yes. cable plugged it's in from correctly? sasha yeah I'm sorry. How's that? Is that a bit better? That's much clearer. Much, much better, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, everyone. Um, now, hey, yeah, uh, go before... On. I was go just going to say, before I completely drop off, and Naomi may want to speak to this as well, um, we had some really positive and upbuilding things to share too from, from a great podcast a uh, friend of the channel, Seth Andrews. Um, and I know that um, he ha often has some very positive people on, but the latest podcast, 21st of April, had people that we've spoken about before from recovering from religion. Mm. You had, um, you had uh, um, uh, Gail Jordan and uh, Daryl Ray, and it was a brilliant episode of the podcast. Um, so if you get a chance to listen to the latest episode, not so much forget the fact that it says thinking atheist, wherever we stand on the spectrum of belief is up to each individual, but the, the points and the suggestions they gave there about how to overcome the anxiety, the uncertainty of these times, how to support one another, how to use this time in a positive way. Um, Dr. Darrell Ray uses an expression there about being careful that we don't fall into the trap of awfulizing the situation. You know, we can reflect rather than ruminate on the situation that is around us uh, in the world. We can use this as an opportunity to give us motivation and power to move forward rather than being uh, an opportunity for mulling over just how bad situations are. Um, uh, Naomi, did you get a chance to listen to some of that as well today? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, and I thought it was really good. Um, so one of the things I took away from it was this idea um, that he was saying to really pull back right back from this period and say, uh, how do I want to remember this in 20 years' time? What do I want to say I did during that period, you know, when coronavirus was on? in 20 years' time, when you're way beyond um, the impact of it, what did I do during that time? And I don't think he sort of said that to say, oh, let's get loads of pressure on ourselves to make sure that we're being really productive. I, ju I just think he means, um, you know, are we able to think a little bit beyond um, this period? And another point I thought he mentioned, which was good, was to just imagine it's now happening for four months. It's that this is how it's going to be for four months rather than thinking in two weeks it'll be better and then you get that constant disappointment every time it's not for two weeks and it sort of feels like it, it's a constant disappointment. Rather just think ahead and just say this is how it's going to be now for four months or six months or whatever. And um, then if it comes short of that, you're sort of less uh, disappointed and more prepared um, uh, you know, to come out of it. Fantastic. That was really good. Yeah. Sounds like a great discussion. And, yeah, by all means, hop on over to The Thinking Atheist, and I'm sure you'll find that discussion with Dr. Daryl Ray edifying. Uh, Rianne asks, to what email address <laughs> should I send the picture of my husband's yeah. haircut? I really need your feedback. Well, the answer there for you, it, Rianne, is this email address, cedars1929 at gmail.com, which is also the email address to use if you want to record a short video message 
Mm -hmm. uh, what you can do is you can upload it to YouTube as an unlisted video, and we will play it on the channel. There is also this URL if you want to send in a voicemail, and we do actually have a very brief voicemail for the team to listen to. Now, I've repositioned my phone as far away as possible to avoid the buzzing that we had in the last show. So let's just see what I can do here. Hey, Lloyd, love your show. Love the work that you do. Um, so how do you think the whole pandemic situation will affect the Watchtower Society financially with everyone being out of work and such and probably not being able to contribute as much financially? Yes, short, but uh, good, good, good question. Good message. Thank you for that. So what do we think, panel? Well, uh, let me bring up the official answer to that. Uh, the organization has published an article on uh, the JW.org website about donations. Uh, I will bring it up very, very shortly. It's uh, a news release. And let me share the screen real quick. Making electronic donations in view of COVID-19 precautions. Yeah, they're right on it, aren't they? So Jehovah's Witnesses in over 112 lands can use donatejw.org to contribute electronically, such as by using a debit or credit card. Wasting no time whatsoever, are they? No. And it's very, very, very easy. You just go like this. You can donate for your congregation, worldwide work, regional convention, build the for the building of the Ramapo complex, your congregation or your circuit. I just love that they've used a 74 year old woman in the US as a, a prime example of like if she can do it, then Yeah. Although that's probably their target demographic, you know, they are yeah. probably receiving the most donations from people who are kind of have been in the organization for life. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, but how desperate, you know, at a time such as this, when people are facing serious hardship, what they're thinking about is their own bottom line, surely. Yeah, it's incredible. But then you would think they would overall would be impacted because, I mean, are they able to buy, how do they buy all their materials? Do we know? So... Uh, what, what, which materials are you referring to? Sorry, publications. How, how are Jehovah's Witnesses buying publications during the lockdown? Well, they print them themselves. So oh, how are they receiving them? Um, yeah. I would imagine just online. Um, right. But, yeah, I mean, look. We, no, I, she, she probably, Naomi probably means the paper and the ink and yeah, yeah. all that physical stuff. That yeah. yeah. Well, they the would. thing is, you, they should be able to just halt the presses because... The whole point of social distancing means that they won't be able to distribute as many publications at the moment anyway. So yeah. they can afford to just shut everything down and re recommence when when the restrictions are lifted. But, um, but, but the paper and the ink is being delivered to the printeries because tr transportation mm. is not uh, halted. In any case, it, it's just distasteful, isn't it, surely, to be, um, yeah, to be thinking about you know where the the revenue where the revenue streams coming from. We've actually done um, a watch time focus on dedicated funds, which revealed that the organisation has a very small contingency in place of I think twenty five million dollars in one year for things going wrong, right. and so they've they've apparently um, that they they they're very much operating hand to mouth. So in answer to the voicemail, I can see the coronavirus actually being quite devastating to the organization mm. because they're, they're not typically well equipped for things to be happening out of the ordinary. So it wouldn't surprise me if they are struggling quite a bit, which would explain their desperation. I don't know what Sasha's doing. 
<laughs> which would explain their desperation in putting this material on JW.org. I mean, you would think they would have a business continuity plan like nobody's business, but there you yeah. go. Clearly not. Indeed. Yeah, and Arthur has put the link on Facebook there for anyone who's watching along on Facebook and wants to watch the relevant Arthur, episode. Look how short your hair is there, Arthur. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, that was when he was more spiritual. Back in the no, more that, spiritual that picture days. is from two years ago. Oh, right. There you go. So uh, I really cut my hair short when I when I go to the hairdresser. Go for it. And uh, I leave it for like six months or so to grow. If Watchtower had a lot of investment in the stock markets, they might be hurting a lot right now. Yeah. They do have some investment. Well, they have investment, but as I covered in my video on the subject, it looks like it's mostly investments that have been made on their behalf. So in other words, I think mostly it's investments that have been bequeathed to them. But yeah, it's almost certainly they're not going to be um, as receiving quite as much money if if there is a massive impact on the stock market, which there seems to be. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, David Amstut um, saying more property yeah. sales coming up. I'm sure that's one way that they will respond by just selling more kingdom halls, I guess. Um, but even the property, property market is going to take a bit of a hit. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Nesbo9 on Twitch saying a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses are window cleaners. They're not earning for sure. Uh, well, that's true, yeah. Um, Vicky Wells says, why do they need money if it's the end? Surely this is the time they should be handing out their previous donations. But, uh, you know, the end is coming for the wicked people. It's not coming for the organization. And when it comes to money and donations, we know it's only ever a one-way street. When does the society ever hand out money to assist members who have donated all their life? Yeah. Indeed, yeah. True. Um, let's just see here. Although they claim charity status and they do no charity work, but that's another whole discussion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Tracy Jeffrey means here. But <laughs> some very specific stuff going on there. <laughs> Gosh. So, uh, I hope you have enjoyed today's lockdown live stream. I'm, I need to end it early because I have some things to attend to, but it's been a delightful conversation. We've covered some wide ranging subjects. We've had a fascinating, interesting new segment, Naomi's Bible Box, where we've learned all about baking bread using human excrement. Uh, we've had <laughs> uh, a, a very uplifting poem in Sasha's Poetry Corner, and we've even had the world's first, to my knowledge, air piano in Sing Along with Arthur. So what more can you really ask for, quite frankly? It was a pleasure hanging out with, with you all. And thanks to everybody, all of our friends who, who joined us via the stream too. It was awesome. Yeah, thank you. That was a lot of fun. It's, it's, always, fun. it's always a pleasure. And thank you, Arthur, as well, for bringing up the uh, screen shares when needed. That was very interesting. Was so, viewers, I hope you have enjoyed today's lockdown live stream. Please do remember to stay inside, stay safe, but also stay positive. And we will see you in the next show, which will be on Monday. Saturday. On Saturday. No, Saturday <laughs> no, no. is 25th. Saturday is Saturday it's Deanna's birthday, so we're skipping Saturday and going straight to Monday. Well done, Arthur. <laughs> Arthur Happy on the ball there. Yeah. yeah. So I'll see you on Monday. <laughs> May Jehovah bless you. Bye. See you all. See ya. See ya.